Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session now we are going to describe about the new way of uh, weak, uh, sorry, strong slot filler structures that is scripts. Actually there are three kinds of strong slot filler structures as I explained in the previous videos, in my previous videos. Just go through that. So one of them is the conceptual dependency. This thing already we have completed and now the second one is nothing but the scripts. And third one is the CYC. So now we are going to talk about the scripts. So conceptual dependency I explained on the board regarding the examples. Now I am going to explain the scripts now. The second strong slot filler structure of knowledge representation of the second unit of the artificial intelligence. Okay. So now we are going to talk about the scripts. Actually scripts was invented in 1977 by Shank and Abelson, these two name of the scientists. Okay, and it is also defined as one of the way or one of the structure to represent the knowledge. So it is one of the most widely used mechanism for representing the knowledge such as uh, weak slot filler structures, frames and uh, semantic nets and conceptual dependencies what we have discussed. Here also it is one of the thing to represent the knowledge. Okay, so again we will describe that uh, script is uh, another way of the definition for the script is it is a structure that describes a sequence of events of particular context. So previously we have described as a, a certain event, <clears throat> a particular context we are going to describe with the help of uh, uh, what we call that is conceptual dependency. But coming to the script, it describes the sequence of events as a continuous set of the events regarding one particular context that can be represented with the help of the script. Okay. And these are uh, frame like uh, structures and represent uh, whatever the events that are commonly occurring, whatever the things that going happen commonly in such a situation or particular context and experiences. And uh, for example, shopping movies, going to movies and uh, shopping in a market and uh, Mm, if we are we want to have some food items we are going to a restaurant to eat something and to deposit something or to um, withdraw something we are going to bank towards all these are certain kind of the events and these e events are not only ended with one single event these are nothing but uh, having a multiple number of the events okay so now we are going to talk about the script, a continuous set of events or the sequence of events. And it is also contain a set of slots of information and contain in it. The slots of information is obviously called as the knowledge. And there are various components of the scripts are there. So what are the various components of the scripts now we are going to see. Obviously the first name of the script will be there that is the name of the script here it is represented. And the second one is nothing but track that represents the special situation or specific variation. That means any tracking situation will happen, any special situation will happen or any special variation will happen that can be used with the help of this track component. And the third one is nothing but the role. So what is the role here? It is actually uh, the roles means who are the people involved in that particular context or in that particular event which are described in the script. The roles of the people. What are the roles of the particular people in the given script? Okay. And next one is the entry condition. So what is the meaning of this entry condition? Okay. So it is a required precondition or pre-situation to execute the script. So to enter anything, to execute anything, what is the required condition? What is the precondition that is called as the entry condition? And the next one is props. Props means uh, non-live object. It is a, it's not a role or it's not a human. It's a not there lively it's a just like a non live object involved in the script and the scenes scenes are nothing but the actual sequence of events that occur that can be described as the scenes scene 1 scene 2 scene 3 like that and the final one is the result so what is the result actually after all the conditions will be satisfied the all the conditions will be true after the events are described and the, for the script what is that particular script that is occurred that's called as the result so these are seven kinds of the components what we have discussed in the given script okay and now we see one simple example that is john went to the restaurant last night he ordered for large steak. This is the first event. Let us see. John went to the restaurant. Last night is itself is an event. Okay. And now coming to the second one is the he ordered. 
see this one is the and second one is he ordered for large stick so this one is also one of the thing one of the event that happens continuously when he paid for it he noticed that he is running out of money so whenever he want to pay the money he put his hand in his pocket he paid he noticed that running out of money and he hurried home since it started raining okay so uh, so so he went to the home while we want to go to the home to pay something uh, the rain is started so what is the question did john ate the dinner or not he paid or not all these questions will arise with the set of the sequence of events so these are the set of four number of the events that continuously happens in particular script okay so now this can be described like this let us see see here uh, the script is divided into the entire script page is divided into 1 2 3 this is the first one and this one is the second division of the page and this one is the third division of the page and this one is the fourth division of the page now look at the first division of the page the script name is the restaurant and uh, what is the next one here he has given it is c the track is nothing but coffee shop okay so the props are nothing but non live objects those are tables menu food check money okay so track is nothing but coffee shop that is and what is the track actually we have seen in our previous special situation specific variation he wants coffee so the track is nothing but coffee shop and now coming to the next one that is uh, rolls the first roll here is the customer okay so second roll is nothing but waiter and third roll is nothing but cook and fourth roll is nothing but cashier and fifth roll is nothing but owner and scene one is described as in the coming to the division number 2 now see let us see scene one entering that is uh, this p trans into restaurant s is customer here we have described here s is nothing but customer physically transferred into restaurant he make a move into the restaurant s attended eyes to the tables the second one see here this one is the first one he sp trans into the restaurant and second one s attend eyes to the tables he has attended his eyes on the tables he watched the table and has ambled where to sit he wants to sit somewhere he checked the all the tables to sit and next one he p trans to table physically he moves to one particular table where the table is there move empty and s move, move s to sitting position s come to the sitting position from the standing position that can be described as the move s okay so what are the entry conditions for this see in the table number 3 we are going to see what are the entry conditions now let us see the entry condition is why he enter into the restaurant because he is hungry and he has money in his pocket so that's why basing these two conditions satisfied he entered into the restaurant now we are going to describe the scene number 2 so what is the thing that is there in the scene number 2 now we are going to see the scene number 2 is nothing but ordering whereas scene number 1 is nothing but entering he entered into the restaurant uh, he checked the table which is empty and he sit in the position in the restaurant now he wants to order so what he will do see uh, s see here s p trans menu to s himself he moved menu to himself and s m trans signal to w he has given he transmitted his signal to the waiter w stands for waiter and w p trans w to the table waiter again come to that particular table where he got signal s m trans need menu to w so he told he asked that uh, need menu to w and w gives the menu to the uh, w puts the menu okay he take the menu and wp trans menu to the table where the customer sat he has given the uh, menu to the customer and wa trans menu to s and he has taken that particular menu where which was transferred by the 
waiter and s m trans to the table what this s m trans to the table is he himself transfer to the uh, waiter to the table he calls s m build choice of food he has ordered his choice of food he t he took some choice of food s m trans signal to w again he gave signal to waiter w p trans w to the table himself he came to the table s m trans i want to f to w so he uh, the waiter himself take the order from the customer and he p trans the uh, w to the cook and w m trans to cook so the order will be given to the cook cook m trans no food item to the if, if food item is available see here two conditions are there so if food condition food is not available no food w p trans w to s w himself information that gives to the customer w m trans no f to s he said that that food is not available go back or go seen four to any number of path and now coming to the next condition cook if the food item is available the cook do prepare f for script he has to prepare that particular food here the first condition is food not available and the second condition is food is available here food not available here food is available like that the scene ordering is represented now we see the another one that is nothing but coming to the scene number three let us see the scene number three here sorry in the scene number three what he have done what he had done is c a trans f to the w cook a trans food to the waiter okay and who is responsible to give the food to the customer the waiter is responsible so waiter a trans food to the customer so s ingest f so he has taken himself to the food in, inside him ingest means taking inside he take the food item okay and now uh, coming to the scene number four this one is the interesting one scene number four is nothing but exiting exiting means w m move w move right check w p trans w to s he himself moved to the customer and the next one is w a trans check to s he has given check to s s a trans tip to w so customer gives the tip to the w s b trans s to m and he has uh, moving from one uh, s p trans s to m he moves from there sp trans money to m he has given money to that particular person the manager okay and um, sp trans out of the restaurant after paying money he went outside right good these are the set of the events for exit where the money is available okay so s m trans to w so customer directly m trans to that particular money to w w trans check to s w trans check to s this is the exiting conditions these are the uh, things that we have used now what are the results see here in particular results what they have described here is let us see here see s has less money s has no o has more money s is not hungry s is pleased optional so if has s has no money and is a uh, s is not hungry s is pleased all these are the results that are happening for this particular uh, uh, script called restaurant having scenes like entering ordering eating and exiting the scenes can be described like this with the help of this p trans attend and build move like that so these are the various things uh, that, that, that are going to represent it in our conceptual dependency the same things also here we have described so these are the roles entry conditions scenes of the four for this particular script the name of the script is restaurant script okay and now we see what is the advantage of this using of these scripts the events that are happen in a continuous manner or in a zigzag manner like this so like this the events will happen as a giant casual chain the script events the sequence of events okay if a particular script is known to be appropriate in a given situation then it can be very useful in predicting the occurrence of events that were not explicitly mentioned if a script is known to be appropriate in a given situation so it is already known it is appropriate for the given situation and it is very useful for predicting the occurrence okay scripts indicate how events mentioned and how the events are related to each other and before a particular script that can be applied it must be activated so again scripts can be divided into two types okay 
so those are fleeting scripts and sorry here the fleeting scripts and non fleeting scripts scripts again be divided into two types fleeting script and non fleeting scripts now we see what are fleeting scripts fleeting scripts are mentioned briefly and may occur again but not central to any kind of the situation they, it may be stored as a pointer to the script that can be accessed later if necessary so these are not a part of any kind of the uh, situation they can happen in between any kind of the situation it can be helpful to any kind of situation the best example for this is it, it can be accessed with the help of some pointer and the best example for this is susan passed through her favorite restaurant when she was going to museum and she really enjoyed the new picasso exhibit okay so this is uh, this may occur again and there is no central to that particular situation there is no guarantee that this cannot thing this thing cannot occur again so it can be occur again such kind of the scripts are called as fleeting scripts now we see what are the non fleeting scripts non fleeting scripts are fully activated they attempt to fill in the slot with particular objects and people involved in the current situation and this particular script once activated it can be used to interpret the number of ways of that particular situation and um, the most important of this particular non fleeting is the ability to predict events that are not explicitly observed so it has the ability to predict the events which are not explicitly observed non fleeting means they are involved in any kind of the scripts where are fleeting scripts are not involved in any kind of kind of the scripts they can happen anywhere they can be reoccur also and um, they can be accessed with the help of pointer they can be stored with the help of as a stored as a pointer to the script so that they can be easily accessed anywhere whereas non fleeting is they they refer to particular context and particular objects and particular people can involved in the current situation and once that particular script is activated the number of ways you are there for interpreting that particular situation it can be represented or it can be interpreted interpreted in multiple number of the ways so the most important is the ability to predict the events that are not explicitly observed the ability to predicting the events here it is having which are not explicitly observed so these are the things nothing but the scripts in the coming video we talk about the cyc also so this is the example of the script i have explained and these are the examples these are the casual chain casual chain of the ch scripts where the events are linked in the chain manner and the types of the scripts are fleeting and non fleeting scripts okay so if at all anybody didn't subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel intelligible tutorials thank you one and all